SW Reviews. I don't know. We don't know if we think games are good or not. Just in case you're worried about buying some random piece of garbage and wasting your money. Hello everybody, I'm John and welcome to our first ever Super Weird Bros Review. Or Super Review. Either one, I don't really care right now. I don't have a title for this. I'm sorry. And what a way to kick off 2015 than with Dying Light. A game that got sent out press copies a day before release or on the Australian Digital Steam Day, which makes me feel like I'm on the same page as the press for once, which is a nice feeling. Now I'm going to give you guys the score straight away. I give it a 4 out of 5. The game is fun as hell. I highly recommend buying it. It is out on Steam right now. If you want to buy it physically, it'll be out on February 27th in Australia, UK and Europe and while it's out in America right now. Now I'm going to give you some completion percentages so you know what I played and that I'm not full of total fucking bullshit. I have played 18 hours of this game. I have completed a few side quests. I have liberated as many strongholds slash safe houses as I could. I did little challenges, played a little co-op, and played no competitive. So yes, there are some points I can't really criticize and I won't criticize them as such. I will review the game for the single player narrative. I can't really review the multiplayer because nobody is playing it right now. Dying Light has a generic story. If you have seen any zombie movie, read any zombie book, you have heard this tale in some form or another. You are Kyle Crane, an undercover government operative sent into a post-outbreak city to infiltrate the two factions surviving in the city to find a top secret file for your government. The story is pretty generic, but it does enough to carry you through the game. It doesn't get boring. There's always something going on. And the voice direction is fantastic. Kyle Crane goes from a hardened military man to a sassy protagonist that is done with your bullshit. And I absolutely love him for it. And I can think of a lot of reasons to tell you to go fuck yourself, but why don't we just pretend for a minute that you don't think I'm stupid? And since he is a hardened military man, he can do some pretty impressive athletical feats, such as free running like a natural prodigy. The gameplay has its big ups and downs. For example, the Dead Island combat, which I really, really dislike, returns. Feels like a wet noodle fight. I'm slapping someone with a pillow. It's not fun to kill zombies with weapons in this game. But there is a saving grace to this combat, and I can understand me being in a different camp to some other people, considering that I guess Dead Island was considered a sleeper hit, maybe? Cult classic? Who knows? But I really love Mirror's Edge. Dying Light brings the first person traversal parkour kind of thing that Mirror's Edge does and makes it so much better. This is, I'm going to say it here, this is the best free running slash climbing traversal system, traversal system that we've ever seen in a video game yet. And thanks to the fact that you mix in parkour with combat in this game so seamlessly, the combat is saved. It feels good to jump off a building and drop kick a zombie into a bunch of spikes. It is fun and frenetic but there is a slight difficulty curve. Once you get over that difficulty curve though, you will find that the three skill trees this game has to offer. Survivor, which is the skill trees you get for completing missions and helping survivors around the wasteland. Agility, which is obviously you jump around, climb stuff, and you get more agility XP. And combat, which is pretty self-explanatory. The rewards for these skill trees are actually pretty impactful. For example, at level 12 of the agility tree, you get a grappling hook, and that completely changes the way you traverse the environment. It feels like the game prefers you to run from confrontations rather than take on all these zombies head on. Matter of fact, it's probably the best way to play the game without getting killed over and over and over again. It is really, really difficult to survive a single zombie encounter, let alone a horde early on. And in the lead up to Dying Light, they focused a lot on nighttime gameplay. The fact that zombies become more ravenous at nighttime, more deadly, there's new creatures at night. This is all true. These zombies are ruthless. They will hunt you down. You are not getting away. It is difficult. You need to be super careful at night time because if it turns into tens of them chasing you, jumping across rooftops at night time, probably not the best idea. That is a quick way to kill yourself over and over and over. With the exception of a few story missions and some side quests, there is actually no need to play at night. None. The only incentive they give you for playing at night is the fact that the experience points you accrue for your agility skill tree is doubled. If you're going to rush through this game, yes, you might need that. I found that you didn't, and I played this game for 18 hours. I could have played it for a lot more. There is a lot to do. But if you're the kind of person that's going to do all the side quests, that's going to explore a lot, you're going to do everything you can. You're not going to travel at night time at all. The only reason you would do this is to prove something that you could handle no time, that you could stand up to the challenge. But there's no reason to do it, so I didn't. 
I took the pansy route and I went to bed like a good little undercover operative. In between fighting zombies and escaping from zombies, you will find yourself traveling from point to point to the next mission. Without the inclusion of fast travel, it gets old really, really quickly. In fact, surviving the trips from point A to point B seems to be more memorable than the quests themselves. And when you unlock the second area for the game, you have to get there manually. You cannot fast travel between the two areas. It is frustrating as hell. So there's going to be a certain point where you just go, fuck it, you're not going to bother with the busy work in between. But because of that, Techland had the insight to be very generous with resources on the map. You do not need to explore far to get what you need to survive. It's not often that you won't be able to craft a med pack or have one on you at all times anyway. And while you're doing all these leaps, boundings and sprints, you will be looking at a very, very beautiful game. I have been playing this on the PC. From what people have been saying, I can't get an even split here. People have been saying it is poorly optimized for PC, but then there are people that are saying the complete opposite. So I'm going to say that I had a solid 60 frames a second performance. The only issues I had with the presentation was... There's really, really aggressive film grain in this game that you can't remove, like Mass Effect 2 style. It is horrible. And this is a personal issue. This may not happen with everybody, but here's a quick warning. If you have an NVIDIA SLI setup on your PC, disable SLI for now as of the recording on the 29th of January 2015. Because for some reason right now, SLI being enabled causes severe flickering and ghosting in cutscenes. So if you don't want to put up with that, you might want to disable SLI for right now. As someone who ran the game on a single GTX Titan, because of that, the game runs fine. With all that being said though, the whole package wraps up well. The combat is sloppy, but the parkour makes up for it. There is some pretty abusive film grain, but the rest of the visuals make up for it. The story is generic but it is much better than Dead Island. Let me leave you guys with a little bit of a comparison with Assinomoy from Dead Island and Brecken from Dying Light. And hopefully this should give you a little bit of a good look at how good Techland has become at making its open world zombie survival games. Thank you for watching my video everybody, I really appreciate it and I hope you all have a very swell day. Thank you again, goodbye. I have many sick and injured here, mate. They're crazy with fear. Tell me where you are. Where are you? Oh, hell. Maybe one more try before we go to Rice. Yeah. Okay, fine. Good luck, Crane. <laughs>